Meet the Fetters 2004. Meet the Fetters was released 20 years ago. I was 13 years old now to most society. I remember the word sounded like a cuss word, but it was not. But I remember kids getting suspended for using the word in 2004. The movie grossed almost 600 million. That's very successful movie. To be able to gross that much money over a corny comedy film. Wow, it's as simple as the movie can get. Guy meets his soon to be in laws and everything that could possibly go wrong goes wrong. It's funnier, darker and far more realistic. Now, we have a sequel to a remake that comes after thousands of imitators and wannabes have already come and gone and ends up feeling like just another episode of wacky mishaps and shenanigans. I consider myself very lucky knowing that a better movie exists out there in bootleg obscureland. But it helps to make my point that these two newer movies, although funny and put together by talented people, lack something that would make them classics, discomfort. It's funny, but I always feel safe watching the Meet the Parents movie. I never feel any suspense or sense of panic when situations get so far past the point of absurd and poor, innocent Ben Stiller must try and explain himself. I know when I look at the screen that that's Ben Stiller doing his thing and that's Robert De Niro doing his thing and it's sometimes funny. The sequel Meet the Feckers tries to one-up the original by bringing in the other side of the family. Greg Fecker, Stiller, and his finite Pam Burns, Terry Polo, along with her parents Jack, De Niro, and Dina, Blank the Danner, take a trip in a seemingly normal mobile home to the Fecker family house. I'm sure you remember in the original that Jack is a conservative, stern, uptight former CIA agent who doesn't understand the pot references in Pop the Magic Dragon. The Fecker parents operate a little differently. They're a liberal-minded, openly sexual, fun-loving couple who could also be mistaken for obnoxious. Bernie Fecker, Dustin Hoffman, is a former attorney and his wife, Roz, Barbara Streisand, is a sex therapist for elderly couples. You can see where this is going, right? It's almost too obvious to keep writing about it. The oddball part of this comedic equation is a two-year-old toddler, Little Jack, played by Spencer and Bradley Pickering, who has joined the Burns family on his trip so that Grandpa Jack can spend more time with him and make him smarter. Little Jack is Pam's brother's child, but absorbs information like a sponge and has even mastered his own version of sign language. Don't be surprised if this kid ends up responsible for the year's biggest catchphrase, or word. And then all hell breaks loose. Watsonness ensues. People's feelings get hurt, the circle of trust is broken and everyone learns how not to be a jackass. Of course, since it's also a Ben Stiller comedy, small animals get harmed and everyone looks at him like it's his fault. Situations start out innocently enough, Stiller's character reluctantly, but willingly, gets involved, makes a mistake that causes a domino effect of more mistakes until Stiller has a moment alone with his woman and they have the tender moment and everything is fine. I'm not here to beat up on these movies. They're funny, this one may be less so, I haven't seen the original since it first came out. The cast seems to be having a good time, particularly Hoffman, who gets most of the laughs, most of them off screen. Barbara Streisand actually didn't get on my nerves, which makes the movie worthy of an extra half star right there. Stiller does his Stiller thing, De Niro does his De Niro thing. It gets tiresome, labored and predictable, but it goes down pretty easy, too. I just wish I could feel sorry for these people. I wish I could relate to them and cover my eyes every time I see something about to go wrong. I remember last summer riding in a car with my girlfriend's dad, who was also far more conservative than myself and a good man. He was showing off his XM radio in his fancy new car. He offered to let me play DJ and pick some stations that would be enjoyable for both of us. I go for the comedy station. Richard Lewis is on. Lewis starts out innocently enough talking about airports, but then us into a bit about masturbation. It was a tense moment, probably for both of us. I wondered, do I switch it off? Do I change it? Do I let Lewis finish the bit? Lewis never finished the bit. It was the longest two minutes of my life. That's how a Meet the Parents movie should feel more often. I know people had a good laugh at the original and I'm sure they will hear too, but I wonder if anyone can actually identify with what goes on in them. Most people aren't this stupid or idiotic in real life, but the movie would like to think they are. It's not insulting or mean-spirited, but it's not grounded in any kind of reality that would make us wince. The new Meet the Parents makes us walk out of the theater saying it was entertaining.